Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm good as well. Um, I was wondering because I was rewatching your your interview again. If you wanted to practice circling to start, because you brought that up, and it's a great yeah. way to just kind of not do intellectual stuff at the beginning. Okay. And so, so they have these prompts. Uh, do you know anything about circling? We can definitely start with where nope. you are. Okay. Nope. Yeah. So, so John got into it through this this person named Guy Senstock, who yeah. invented it like 20 years ago or something like that. And it's this way of relating that really isn't intellectual. And it's not that narrative. So it's more like embodied. And what's it like to be you? And what's it like to be me? And what's it like, like to commune? I think you said in your, in the interview yeah. you did with him. So yeah. it, it's kind of, it's aim is like that. And uh, I won't say more and I'll just kind of, they, they use these prompts during the activities I've done. So um, one they have is called empathic listening and reflection. Mm -hmm. And so, and I'll start. And so I'll just share something and then you'll say, hearing that, and then you can just say whatever makes you feel or what you notice or what's alive for you, or you could say- Within myself. What yeah, I yeah, as a response to that, yeah. Okay, um, but not, not what is, what, what I notice about you when you it share. It could be, just, yeah, it could, it could totally be, be what you, yeah. Okay. Um, um, so you're just trying to do empathic listening. And, okay. Um, so yeah, so, so I'll start, I'll say, oh, I, um, I'm excited to uh, do this interview because I don't know you and most of these interviews I've done I've been with kind of friends or people I know a little bit so the novelty of this is kind of exciting for me. Okay. Hearing this makes me uh, reflect how I feel about this interview and I actually feel very excited about it as well. I have had um, just to give some contrast, um, how excited I feel when I listen to that is I, I feel a little bit low. I felt a little bit low the last few days. And uh, I think it's something energetic going on. And I pretty much canceled everything that my intuition uh, said to cancel today. And it didn't say to cancel this one. So I, um, yeah, feel excited too. Did I do this right? That was great. Yeah, okay. that was just what you were experiencing. And so hearing that, um, I really appreciated how honest it felt that you were just kind of not just sharing the positive things, but you were kind of sharing just what you were feeling. Um, I also felt like a compliment when you were saying that you were willing to do this interview still, despite uh, maybe not being as, as eager about things this week. Um, and I noticed that it kind of calmed me down a little bit when I, when I was listening to you. So like, I feel a little more like centered in my body and a little more like relaxed in my shoulders um so yeah nice hearing this makes me feel more comfortable as well and i think it's actually um i'm grateful um for the opportunity to tune in like this before we get into the intellectual stuff um so yes i would like to express my gratitude for that yeah hearing that i get a little excited and and I'm kind of an optimistic person, um, so I like being excited. Um, and I'm noticing that I'm just kind of curious more about you as a person as we kind of do this. Um, yeah. Nice. Hearing this makes me actually um, doubt myself a little bit right now because I'm thinking am I doing this right? Am I responding right to you? So I'm listening to what you say. Um, it, I, I feel it. And then the second thing that comes up is, am I doing this circling the right way? So now I have some doubts about, about that. <laughs> yeah, hearing that, um, I noticed that that's very relatable because I have done circling with different people. And a lot of people, when they first try it, aren't sure about what it is. Mm -hmm. And also that reminds me um, that a lot of people that do it a lot also say the same thing, that they're still not sure what it is because it is this kind of um, different mode or way of being in the world compared to just like how we normally socially interact. Um, yeah. So I can empathize a lot with that. And I often, again, just kind of reflecting back to some of the circle I've done, feel nervous before I do it. So I think that's, that's kind of a normal feeling. Mm -hmm. um, 
And yeah, so we'll do maybe one more round. We'd love to keep doing this for okay. hours. <laughs> yeah, hearing hearing this actually makes me makes me think um, how needed it is though to kind of break you know the normal patterns that we have because if you want to create different results, you have to introduce different methodologies and ways of of doing things. And I think that is what you are looking to achieve on the channel as well. Um, like having, you know, thought provoking conversations. So hearing this really makes me think, yeah, you walk the talk in that way, because you just <laughs> throw me into this. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. I feel again, like very like heard. And, and I appreciate that you, you said that and noticed that. And, um, and I, I agree with you that like, one of the cool things about these practices is that they put us into a place that is real but different mm -hmm. so that we can transform um and and just to kind of end the circling and, and share some of my other experiences with circling um it's it's kind of amazing some of the the things that i've seen because john as you mentioned on your channel he does these kind of two-day intensive weekends mm -hmm. where it's kind of a mix of enough lecture to give you a sense that if you did it later you'd know what you were doing and then a lot of little activities, a lot of them, especially early on, are teaching some basic meditations and then teaching some of these basic circling skills like the prompt that we just did. And then by the end, I think every time I've done it, um, just people are, are so um, kind of different than when they started. Like for example, without getting too personal with any details of people that were there, uh, we did this fellowship activity. Um, and people were kind of nervous the first day, but the second day they were like, oh, I want to start doing that now. Let's do that next. And they were really excited to do these practices mm -hmm. that, I mean, I don't know anyone that's doing quite what, what they were doing with the dialectic into the logos and the fellowship practices. Um, so it's really cool to see people that are more or less interested in like John's work, try this stuff out, or maybe they've done other things and just uh, really enact transformation. Yeah through the processes. Yeah, um, that's so cool because it, it also like this, what we just did and, and what you talked about that can happen in spaces like this. Um, remember when you first, when you, when you, uh, when we first spoke and you said you want to talk about the grounding aspect of, you know, spirituality as well. And it, immediately it made me think of, okay, what, what's the grounding practice that I do? And it involves an inquiry, I call it inquiry. Um, but it very much reminds me of the circling that we just did mm. because you and I do this with a sparing partner as well um, and you can do it with you know whoever um, knows a little bit about this but essentially you really inquire into what comes up in the meditation it's like yeah. let's say okay there is an emotion of unease and then you talk for 15 minutes um, by yourself so there's um, the other person just listens and mirrors uh -huh. But you talk, you inquire for 15 minutes into those feelings or yeah, whatever yeah. comes up for you. And you think in the beginning, like, what am I going to talk about for <laughs> 15 minutes? And it is, and then you get into the process, you'd be like, okay, I feel anxious. And then I inquire, why do I feel like this? Oh, and then, you know, you come to your own conclusions, you get, you receive insights as you continue this. And then at some point, the other person after 15 minutes, can also mirror back to you what they've heard or what that did to them. So it was quite similar. Yeah, also. yeah, so it is very similar to some of their activities. They and it is too. a very, very transformational, very grounding experience. Yeah, yeah, people really respond to mirroring. Like we've almost lost that and how busy and how like independent our cultural kind of point mm -hmm. of view is. But it's so powerful just to like be heard by someone and to hear yeah. yourself out loud compared to your thoughts and follow those trains. 15 minutes is a long time, really. You could, mm -hmm. for, for sitting with maybe one or two experiences in a deeper way, I can see how, how that would be a really um, useful and cathartic and like revelatory experience for people. Um, and the other person, just by listening, like you get this practice of listening, which is also yeah. kind of a lost art. And um like listening is half of speaking so it's kind of cool that totally <laughs> and I would go even uh, further to say like it's the listening 
but then it's also the holding space like no um of the other person like no um no response to it as well simply being there and holding the space for the other person to go into that self um, exploration mode um, because sometimes you would you'd find when somebody inquires so deeply because it's mostly it is all relatable stuff because we there's a spectrum of emotions that we uh -huh. all go through you know so likely what the other person says you've experienced in one way or the other so it's very easy to then say yeah I can relate to this oh I feel the same or yeah my mom did that to me too and it annoyed me <laughs> or something like this you, know? yeah, yeah. you can always respond and um, it's but it's not about you in that moment it's about you just holding the space you know yeah, and yeah. that person can feel that too so that's why I don't do it with everyone as well because they have to be capable to kind of just sit there with whatever I dig out in for my subconscious um, and uh, so it's a, it's a it's a really great exercise um, for both parties yeah that's really wise and and I think one of the things that I liked that what you said was that you won't just do it with everyone and it takes like emotional depth and mm -hmm. and the capacity like uh john in your interview brought up um that it's not just propositional but there's these skills and this perspective and the skills of just not judging but not leaving and the yeah. skill of concentrating on a longer line of thought that isn't necessarily relevant to you but is really relevant to the person that you're talking with and yeah. then you can do that with strangers or then you can do that with your family and and like kind of cultivating those skills is really powerful um and yeah. one of the things that kind of draws me into these kind of practices because it's easy to get good at intellectual things and it's easy to get good at things that are like kind of tangible and lead to material gain and stuff but to kind of spend the time to develop the more like psycho emotional or psychosocial kind of kind of parts of ourselves um or maintain it if you've already got it like like i studied skill maintenance in college and, and skill decay and like we just decay when we stop using things so if we get yeah. these skills then just by doing it regularly kind of maintains that that capacity for empathy or that capacity to like hold space um yes. yeah. is really like just as important as learning the skills to, to begin with um yeah and you can notice in yourself when you're you know aware uh, when you're on the listening end and you are aware of you know yourself um and then somebody shares something with you and because your only role is to hold space and you can you can even witness your own judgments it's like yeah, you know, yeah the other person says something and you can feel the trigger or the judgment be like this should not be like this and then at the same time you can just let it go so it's such a uh, it's it's such an it's really such a mirror like even even if you act as a mirror as a listener for the other person in a way the other person is your own mirror too because right. they confront you when they when they have the when they feel like safe and supported so they people will share you know mm -hmm. things from the depth of their soul yeah, yeah. They feel like I can share this with you now I, I will share you know whatever have whatever is significant to me and then and then you might be like because it's not a normal thing to share like this <laughs> depth you know let's say from the childhood i've experienced this when i was six years old and like this is how you know it it, it, uh, it affects me today you might notice then ah like some judgments or some i don't know what you know so no it's you're like right you're totally almost like a circling non-verbal circling you could say <laughs> right because we, we we have all these like kinesthetic triggers yeah. happening and all of these kind of repressed is probably the wrong word but all these kind of like backgrounded yeah parts of ourselves and even if you don't explicate them and speak about them just by noticing them yeah. right you're getting to connect with parts of yourself that are there but they're just not like in your day-to-day -day personality or the kind of normal interactions you have with with your um with the rest of your life so oh, that's that's yeah and that's why these practices are so interesting and um yeah i saw that you do like leadership workshops too like mm -hmm. is this the kind of things that you'll do when you consult or, or yes what is yes. yeah yeah what is that like because i've, I've seen yes. that like let's make your bottom line grow kind of consultant but this seems different than that yes i don't do bottom line <laughs> <laughs> I'm consultant i'm not interested in that although i i used to for for contrast because i used to be a management consultant um and you would do that you would do the bottom line uh, right 
I mean, I would do that. So I can I, see here, I noticed the distance of myself. I would say you could do that, but I, right, I, right. I would actually do that as a, as a management consultant, but uh, not anymore. So I've had, um, you know, multiple, I'd say, spiritual awakenings. Um, so now wow. I'm just concentrating more on the conscious leadership development. And I do this in, in various settings, uh, one-on-one, uh -huh. um, in groups, uh, through uh, the community that we are building at Human Plus, um, mm -hmm. multiple ways, but practices like this, for example, this is something that I would typically do one-on-one -on -one working with clients, mm -hmm. um, but also there is variations of that um, where we can do it in, in groups. Um, it depends uh -huh. very much who is in the group um, what they what the group needs so then you have to take into account like what 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 are we here as a group to achieve and mm -hmm. um, and work on and is this a good medium but yes I do yeah. a lot of this kind of um, practices to get people into their body and mm -hmm. also move past like the mental all of these uh, because of the people that I work with they're very um, mental they're very they come very much usually from the mental level you know because that's why they're in business like everything is explainable everything is rational right, right. it's not so much like tuning in intuition kind of thing and this kind of stuff that really gets mm. you in 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 touch with your emotions not with your mind like what makes sense to say now no no this is what comes up you know this is what it asks me to look at yeah and have you seen like like have you followed up on any of these things and seen like six months or 12 months down the road that people are still having the changes that maybe you saw after the consulting or like how how long lasting can some of this be or yeah i honestly i don't have to follow up with people to know that that is the case because i just uh -huh. know it in my whole being that once you have um like an awakening of some right. sort some some consciousness expansion um you will you'll not be able to go back to the old ways you might not always move as fast as if you have a mentor or a coach or you uh -huh. know, a support system around you to continuously practice these things um but it is almost impossible to you know once you peel away those layers of the onion to say no i'm gonna i want to have them back you know i want to be like restricted and limited as i used to be before yeah so, I haven't really followed up with people in that way, but I know that they are on the path simply by speaking to them regularly uh -huh. or having them part of the community. Okay, so you are talking to them down the road, though. Yes, yeah, even, yeah. even if not formally. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And they're so, still. Or like, they become excited. part of the community, or oh, yeah. you, you know, you see what what kind of books they read and stuff, and people share. So. Oh yeah, yeah that's good. Looking for these external signs. Yeah. Of yeah. Like, oh, they're they're volunteering more, or they just yeah, posted exactly. on Instagram like a charity drive they did or something and exactly okay so i'm very active on linkedin um i'm not so much on other social media channels but on linkedin uh -huh. and you see like when people you know start to just talk more mindfully and more conscious and, yeah yeah uh, yeah and so then they yeah no you, these are the signs that are just um i'm yet to meet the person who's had an as, as let's say I say spiritual awakening, which is often the word a word where people be like, "This is spirituality." You have a problem with spiritual awakening, but that's that's what it is when you move beyond the mental level and get in touch with your emotions and uh, your intuition and beyond your five senses and stuff and all of that. Uh -huh. um, I'm yet to meet the person who goes back to, "I would like to be restricted by my five senses." <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, because especially in that world. Um, there's so much burnout. There's so much like workaholism. There's so much like some people really do get a lot of meaning from like the success that they're having and growing the things. And but I think like I 90% of those people or 80% of those people are missing something. And so when you yeah, show them like, oh, you can be happy and wealthy, or you can yes. be connected yeah. and powerful. It's not either or, then they're gonna kind of start moving in that direction and expanding in that kind of totally locked off oh that's really yeah because people's I mean, like oh go ahead yeah yeah no no i think you're gonna say what i i was about to say so you continue no i was gonna say like like john says that too like that people like people love wisdom and that it's a thing that like everyone it's a good everyone wants mm -hmm. but I've, I've struggled sometimes to kind of connect it the way you were saying like of course if they're starting like this and then they find out there's chocolate in the world or they find out that yeah. like there's a garden right outside their house and they're going to want to notice that and they're going to start 
through the action doing the transformation not through some kind of knowledge but yeah yeah it's yeah. true a lot and a lot of people um i don't know this would be very interesting to know how exactly that belief formed in society i really don't know and i don't and actually i don't even want to put my focus to it but i just acknowledge <laughs> that it, it is there um that people think you know you cannot be aligned and connected and successful at the same time yeah yeah it is very bizarre to me because uh, I've seen, well, first of all, I've experienced it firsthand, you know, uh -huh. completely disconnected and, um, and then, you know, you create some successes outside, but there's always something missing. But then when you, um, and I've seen it myself and so other people, so many other people, and in fact, many of the most successful entrepreneurs, they are extremely spiritual, they're extremely connected. Mm -hmm. um, so I once wrote an article about this as well. Um, but anyway, so I don't know where it, it gets where people get the idea from that you cannot be tuned in connected and you know be led by your intuition and successful at the same time i think it's an, an extreme superpower for for many many reasons when you feel connected not only do you feel like more uh, you, you have more meaning in life you know you yeah. understand the bigger picture you have you, you know why you get up in the morning not only that but also like very practical things like when you know how to rely on your intuition you can cut out so much noise mm. you know, and you don't mm. always have to understand it you know, you don't always have to understand what, why your intuition says to you, talk to this person or talk to this person or talk to this or don't talk to this person. Uh -huh. But it always like my intuition has never been wrong. Like I've only <laughs> ever had issues when I haven't followed my intuition. Yeah, yeah. I and I remember like those lot. situations. Right. I remember when it said, like, don't do it. For example, don't invest in my previous startup. It said very clearly to me, do not invest your own money into this. I remember it like as crystal clear as uh -huh. yesterday and you didn't listen. not invested and i thought to myself because lower part of myself thought i'd had to had to do it to i don't know make up or be seen or whatever it was mm. that insecurity that i was carrying at the time um, i did it two weeks later the whole thing went down two weeks later huh. two weeks later yeah, so yeah, wow. this was the moment where i was like never and then your jaw going. just drops and your heart sinks in your gut and you're like oh my gosh what just happened and at the same time, I knew it, you know, my intuition said, <laughs> it's like, we told you, don't do it. Yeah, like you said, it's tough when your identity says one thing and your kind of heart or your intuition says something else. And you don't want to like, get rid of that sacred identity that you have. And yeah. I, I'm sure you know Tim Ferriss. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. you're in the business, like success world. And he said that when he started meditating, like he was really nervous to start because he thought he would lose his edge because he had written mm -hmm. all these books and had this awesome blog and was so uh, on top of life. And then he's like, oh, this cool new thing called meditation. I really like it. But then his rational kind of decision-making process was like, but then you'll be soft and weak and, and not functional. And, and obviously he yeah. eventually kind of integrated both and, and is a huge proponent of meditation and different yeah. practices. But and like I get it. Yeah. And I get it because it is a scary process, but it's like you cannot find meaning in your identity. Like you have to find the meaning is in, in your in your in your true in your truest form of being. Mm -hmm. um, and not in your soul print that's where the, that's not even an identity you know but that is um that is where you find meaning and purpose and where you get the joy and the where you can feel love and all of these things not in, mm -hmm. an, in an identity um that you know you have made up for yourself and, and honestly you haven't even made it up yourself it was shaped collectively by society yeah, by yeah, what yeah. is expected so when you yeah. really like peel that away you understand as well that's not actually my identity that is who i think i should be based on everyone else's opinions yeah. and so therefore you cannot find purpose and meaning in an image that is actually created by other people um on a, of course in mm. the in the in the subconscious uh, this, this would not have happened consciously because if you're consciously um creating yourself you don't you don't need those labels you look you look inside right and so i get it that when you when you start meditation and when you start to really question your whole existence and this is usually the first thing that you know is being stripped away from people is that this that identity level is mm. that people glimpse like wait a second i'm not an entrepreneur i mean i'm 
I have the role as an entrepreneur, but I am not the entrepreneur, you know, I'm, I'm eternal. I'm like so much more. So of course people don't understand <laughs> it in the that. first meditation, but yeah. it's usually like those hints where they tap into, into themselves and then they, they get the sense of, okay, well, I'm not all of these labels and there's something more for me here. And right. that is a scary process. That's a fucking scary process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, people that's don't, great. I can understand. I've been there myself. So. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause identifying you, with John, you talked about like um, people that kind of get it and then still just want to keep doing and doing, 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 but like it's, it's, it is a being and it is a um, it's not just like an, uh, a behavior you're trying to enact. And, and it's yes. so easy to go, Oh, I have these 25 really successful behaviors and they check off all the things that I like want and I just do them all the time. And then I'm like, why am I empty? Why am I yes. you know, stressed I out think, if I'm, yeah. I think John called it the having mode and the being mode also. Right. Like that's he said Eric he wants to achieve yeah. the being mode with a having mentality. I think that's what he said. And that's what he means or what he, how, how would he describe it? This like having, having, or you could also replace it with doing. Um, I'm now like doing, doing, doing to you like create impact in the world or whatever it is. But actually, um, actually what I want is the being, the meaning, but you don't achieve it by like doing, doing, doing. You mm -hmm. achieve it by experiencing yourself. And of course, then, uh, you know, you do ask yourself the question, but once you're in a, in a being mode, <laughs> like what am I, I mean, I'm still here, you know, I'm still like, in this <laughs> yeah. form. Like, what am I going to do with my life now? You know, uh -huh. if, it, if the answer is not to, to run in the hamster wheel all the time and do and do and acquire new things. Yeah, yeah. What I came to learn is you can still do things in the world and do it mm -hmm. with great joy, like I do with my uh, projects. They give me like immense joy. Right. But that's the reason why I do them because they bring me joy. They bring me happiness. I love it's a it's a it's a the process of like working with people in that way and creating content is like my inner process. It helps me to refine my own thing. It helps me to discover myself. And mm -hmm. I share that. And that is of benefit for people, as it turns out. Um, and that creates some impact. But I'm create mostly creating that for myself. Yeah, and yeah. if it helps other people, nice. Okay, amazing. But I'm not creating, I'm not running after the impact or the, the money or anything like that for yeah, the sake yeah. of the money. It just... That's great because like a lot of artists that do get in touch with their being mode, they get really insecure because then they want the approval or they want the success. But it's like what you're saying is, and I think John talks about this too. It's not that the doing is, is the devil or is bad, but it needs to be in service of you or in a right relationship or at least mm -hmm. discerning which one is appropriate for which situation. So I think he said like brushing your teeth, you don't want to have like oh my gums and spend 45 minutes <laughs> brushing your teeth yeah. but at the same time you don't want to treat people like toothbrushes and then wonder why you're like lonely all the time because you're just like everyone you see oh I love you're that getting something or something like a means to your ends yeah um and find like when you can kind of dance between those then you can yeah. feel really harmonized and um that's and then, yeah, so like true. you're doing, you're sharing it with others. So that's even a whole other level of, like, he would say agape, um, if you saw his series and that stuff. Can't we were able to. What, what does that mean, the agape? So, yeah, so he talks about different types of love, and this is very Greek based. And so there's like eros, which is consumptive. So when I see a cake or when I have some, like, I need oxygen right now, I'm not like worried about like if it's the most virtuous oxygen or not. I'm just consuming oxygen. Yeah. And then there's, Philea, which is more of, I think, what we're doing right now. It's like friendship, mutual respect, community. And then there's agape, which is like when a parent loves a child and then they grow into a really healthy adult. Or when, you know, John takes time out of his busy day and does these interviews with people like you and me for no benefit, really. Like he could be doing stuff on Mars or spending time mm -hmm. with his loved ones. And instead he's like, well, someone that seems honest is reaching out to me and mm -hmm. I want to like help them and help myself. But really it's so generous. A lot of what he does, he taught a meditation class for nothing for 
150 hours online or something that like that well so that that to me is like agape where you're really not expecting anything in return mm -hmm. um but it's like in a in a loving mode it's like caring is probably maybe a better word than loving because mm -hmm. you're just trying to care about again a parent a really healthy parent child relationship because children are monsters a lot of the time so loving them for more than 10 minutes really either you're doing it out of necessity and frustration and impulse or really consciously and balancing like oh i think i need to spend more time with them or i need to take them volunteering and i'll go this time because last time i dropped them off they didn't really handle it well and just mm -hmm. kind of giving yourself people do that to animals too like you can love an animal into like a new being like those bear rehab shows i don't know if you ever watch any of those um no you just where, where people love animals yeah. animals are wild and untrusting and yeah. fidgety and then people can develop this relationship oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden they're friendly and they're yeah. curious about people and and stuff like that so it's it's a very human quality mm -hmm. to be able to like love another being for almost no personal benefit mm -hmm. except for like it continues the love after you're gone i guess is kind of the yeah and you do get a personal benefit in the way that it is just a nice thing to to do you know you're right um, like right when you're mature you enough it feels yeah. awesome to do that yeah yes and uh and even um you know we, i mean we, when you just look at this conversation like we don't know who's gonna you know who who this is going to reach if anyone is going to reach out to me or to you after that right. i don't know this right but still it's um uh i don't see this as a for nothing i see this as a really nice way to connect with somebody new uh -huh. uh, to learn something to just exchange and uh, and and just i don't know like the universe surely has had a plan uh, for, <laughs> or has a plan that, yeah. otherwise you know we wouldn't be talking so it is always good for something we just don't know immediately and we will maybe never know what exactly it is that mm -hmm. you know is the benefit but this is also um well what is the benefit this is this what i mean like moving beyond those five senses as well like people usually they make decisions with their mind they'll be like if i speak with this person then i get xyz yeah, back yeah. um like they, they want to see it they want to see it tangible so anything that isn't captured with those senses right um seeing hearing uh tasting it whatever it is you know mm -hmm. something that you can physically mm -hmm. get um when people don't see that then they'd be like i'm interested or i'm not interested whereas the way i have come to perceive life is you know you often do something and you don't see the benefits are such in, in you know in that world but it still does something it is energy like we are broadcasting out a massive energy field right now so right. <laughs> yeah, who right. knows 100 so you know everything that we talk about that carries energy frequency so who knows at which end of the world this is going to reach somebody i yeah, have yeah. no about uh, no clue about i'm going to go to bed thinking <laughs> or knowing that somebody is going to be impacted in in a certain way and will maybe change their their um, make a different decision because they watch this um and i'll never get to know right 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 that's where it's more faith than fine. reason yeah yeah and yeah and that gives me a lot knowing that that you know everything that you do everything that you uh, everything holds energy and everything does something this is not for nothing yeah that's that uh, that does get lost on like the cultural level of of sense making when you go Oh, what's in it for me? What's going to happen? What's the outcome? Yeah. But it's actually you're participating in this process that is itself really good. Yeah. And that participation, like like I teach, and especially when I was like learning to teach and and in the beginning, it's it's much more like art than like science because you don't see the results. You're just mm -hmm. doing a lot, and you're kind of like I think they're learning. They seem to be demonstrating things, but until they actually get a hundred percent of the learning, and there's a lot maybe going on the the like the success doesn't come so you could be working with someone for weeks and you could be feeling like okay i did my part i think i saw them doing their part but then they did like a test and they didn't get the question right mm -hmm. but that like that they were going from zero to 60 percent and then 60 to 80 and then finally like it bursts out and and it goes like oh now you can do the thing but if you're yeah. always like well this kid isn't tying their shoe yet it's been 8.2 minutes and the average number of minutes it takes for a child is 8.2 
And yeah. if you have that attitude, then like you're really constraining. Totally. Uh, yeah. You know, I post um, loads on uh, LinkedIn um, and I really like, I, I enjoy the process of uh, content creation and yeah, yeah. I see myself as a content creator. And for uh -huh. that, you know, I, I want to find joy in it. And I mean, amongst the many things to, that I do, you know, one of the things is creating content. And, um, and, and recently I got this question quite a lot where people said, so how how does this actually pay off for you and i'm like what what do you first of all what do you mean uh -huh. <laughs> um, how many clients so very concrete questions how yeah. many clients do you get from linkedin so then i had to think how many clients do i get from linkedin it's actually not that many given the uh -huh. given the volume of things that i post okay and then and then people um well, actually, this is all, where, first of all, I'm reflecting back now, where's the measurement? Like, what is a lot of clients, you know, in ratio to your content? So that's already bullshit, right? But people <laughs> be like, um, yeah, how many clients do you get? I'm thinking, yeah, I get a few, but like, not massively. And so then people be like, so you should change your content strategy. And I'm thinking to myself, no, because I like creating the content. And uh -huh. if every time I post... Um, every time I do create something, it helps me to refine my own thinking. People then often say like, oh, oh I've heard this a lot, like, oh, you should, uh, you should write a book someday or like you should do more public speaking. And I think to myself, yeah, absolutely. For that, I need to practice. For that, I need yeah. to create the content, you know? Right. So this is exactly the, the kind of invisible stuff where people be like, you create this piece of content, how many clients did you get from it? Well, maybe that piece has not resulted in a direct cl client contact, but maybe that piece of content has helped me to understand mm. myself better, has understand helped me to understand my message better, will at one point be picked up by someone who will be like, this would make a great TED talk, you know? Who knows? Right, right. So, so this makes, uh, this is why it's important to find enjoyment in everything that you do because mm -hmm. it does actually like amount up and it does get you somewhere even though you might not see it in the week after but it will show in some way yeah 100 percent. and, and um, bruce lee has this great quote that like the doer gets the value so just by by you doing all of that <clears throat> you're learning how to like say your message uh and you said you know jordan peterson for your talk with yes. john yeah so he talked about how when he wrote the maps of meaning he would write each sentence like 10 or 20 times. And all of that happened before he got famous. And that's no coincidence, right? He was yeah. just trying to say, okay, I want to say this, but how can I say it better? How can I say it better? How can I say it better? And now he can just effortlessly just enchant crowds. And the same thing with John. John's very meticulous and put in all that time for the last 20 years. And now he can have a really spontaneous interview with you and it can sound really free and, and loose, yes. but be yeah. super tight and focused at the same time totally and this is exactly what john also talked about in the interview he said you know people uh, i can't remember exactly how he said it, but basically like people want the end result like the, right. the eloquent conversation the like very insightful deep conversation but they don't want to have the process to it like yes yes i remember that moment, to the yeah. level like john does and hopefully i will be at some point and you it's like it does take practice mm -hmm. it does take the content the videos like to you know it does take something and this mm -hmm. is what people don't see they they see well well if that doesn't give you like immediate results then what is it good for well maybe i have like a you know a grant like a long i'm, I'm having a long life you know so that all helps to be able to speak like john does at some point um or other yeah. people so i think yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is this this process is so and this is, yeah, this is what he talked about. Like really, yeah, people don't want want all of that. They just want yeah. the last moment. Yeah, uh, like, like if we just have a pill to be smart, another pill to be healthy, another pill to be wise. Yeah. Yeah. That's what everyone wants is just like no effort. But but it's, it's the, and I learned this from this company I work at, like when they trained, I still remember this. This was like 15 years ago. They said, focus on the process not the outcome because if you focus on the process you get the outcome but if you focus on just the outcome you might get neither and so uh, i just so say good. okay like what can i do to be a good conversationalist right now mm -hmm. what can i do to re to define like refine my ability to write or to be more centered or calm like put in those those reps 
And then you go, wow, 12 months later, I can draw or I can speak better or I can create better Instagram posts or whatever it is. But if you just go, I want to be Jordan Peterson tomorrow, that just is impossible. You're going to actually short circuit your effort. You might have lower self-esteem because now you're confused as to why you failed. Um, And so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, and I studied expertise in in grad school and just the 10,000 hour rule it really works if you put 10,000 hours into something wholeheartedly over a three to five to seven year period, I guarantee you'll be better at whatever you started at. Like it's just yeah. so, so verifiable in all the experts in the more quantifiable domains. Cause you can't look at like motherhood expertise or friendship expertise, even though there's definitely skills in being a good friend, um, you know, but they do, they put in the time and yeah, maybe you're lucky and you start really high, but that can be a curse too, because then you think, oh, I don't even need more effort and you miss out on being even greater. And, you know, most, most great artists, musicians, athletes, they're spending like two to six hours a day alone, not glamorous, yeah. just running up hills or, or practicing one note that they keep missing or whatever it is. And it's not glamorous, like in our fame culture, it just seems kind of foolish. Like you should be at least like YouTubing it or something. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, so yeah, um, the, the scientific evidence shows exactly what you're talking, that that just doing the reps is so valuable, even if it's zero clients. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, otherwise, you know, if you if you don't find um, joy in the creation process, you really miss mm. your life. Because yeah, that's yeah, so you might, miserable. So many people. Yeah, it's are. so miserable. Because uh-huh. yeah, actually, you might get super famous in like I don't know four or five years, you know, or <laughs> even tomorrow, you know, this is yeah. all of this can happen. But if you cannot enjoy everything that is in between, and you just wait for that day that you become famous, first of all, very shortly after, you will realize that well that, yeah, that's yeah. not where the happiness is anyway. Um, but second, you've really wasted your time um in between and that that reminds me so much of and i it's incredible how people are being conditioned though to believe that that is just who what you're supposed to do because it reminds me so much of my time when i was a management consultant you know i worked for um for deloitte um oh yeah yeah i worked with them too yeah yeah in financial services so you had a very very clear path ahead so you do like an analyst two years then you do consultant two years then you do manager Uh three years or so you to become a manager you have to do this xyz you have to take all the boxes like you have to literally tick the boxes and then present that case to you on like a powerpoint slide and you see exactly where you're lacking and where you're not lacking Mm -hmm. and and people would follow that and and it's almost like they mistake everything from like the prom- from consultant to manager promotion, from manager to senior manager, it's like in between they just function, they just do it, and and they actually are pretty miserable. Yeah, um, they don't have time for their families, they don't have time for hobbies, they don't have time for friends, they don't have time for anything. Mm. Their their health is shit, like <laughs> anything. You know, yeah. it's it's just not healthy. Um, and they 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 would do it, they would do it, they would do it until the day that the promotion comes, and then they go out to to the pub with some friends have some beers have maybe champagne i don't know um maybe Mm -hmm. that high lasts for a day or so and then it'd be like okay next promotion is in three years so now i have to like get back into it so it's like it's super crazy that people really miss their entire life up until the point that there is no promotion anymore then they are partner or they're they're whatnot and they make um that's the term in consulting uh partner that's the Mm -hmm. highest level and then you make shitload of shitloads of money and you've kind of forgotten that you had a life and you're 40 or 50 or so and and that's when usually people that's why people have a midlife crisis they're right. like, and that, that is that is accepted by society as well you know like it's normal to have a midlife crisis it is not normal to have a no. midlife crisis yeah older cultures simpler cultures you just kind of grow old and and fade away you don't have these traumas yeah. and these yeah yeah no that that's excellent points and um the the idea that you can just think your way to things and not have feelings. You kind of just push all the feelings out of the way while you just have all these pristine thoughts and build up this mechanical self. It's, it's, um, 
it's actually not more productive. I forget the name of the speaker, but um, at the uh, Ross Business School of Management in the University of Michigan, they have a positive psychology program that was like an hour away from my graduate school. So I went there all the time and mm -hmm. the head of it was like super friendly. And I remember when he retired, I wrote him a nice note. And he wrote me a really long reply. And there was a speaker there and he, he showed just like, tens of thousands of, of samples of data on how after 40 or 50 hours of work, your productivity just plummets. People that have meaningful lives way outperform people on an hour to hour basis because they're happier, they're more creative. They're, they don't take as much effort to concentrate. There's so many things that when you're just like satisfied and, and happy, you'll still work hard. You don't go like, oh, I'm going to play golf this afternoon and quit your responsibilities. You actually function really well when you're nourished and happy and these kind of things and so it's it's a total lie that if you just give up all your happiness for success you'll win you might because if you spend 80 hours doing something and everyone else is spending 40 or 50 then yeah you're going to outcompete them but you're miserable you're just so totally, miserable yeah. and and people that do just a more normal workload and have healthy hobbies and outlets and healthy social lives like even the social life part gets missed because your network is where you get so many new ideas and where you know, oh, I didn't know your son is looking for a job. We actually have an opening there. And now you have this, there's all this growth and, and, yeah. and networks are another thing that's kind of lost in this like individualist siloed society, but like we're nothing without the people in our lives. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I brought up a lot of thoughts there. Yeah. Oh my God. Me too. It's uh, <laughs> because it took me so long as well to understand what is actually going on and how can this even, how is this so, how is this even, um, how is this happening basically? Like how, how can, how come we are all so manipulated in the way that we think that is what we have to do. And then I've come to understand like how, you know, when you, um, well, your own consciousness is one thing, but when you then understand how that plays out collectively mm -hmm. and uh, that it's really, it's, um, it's a way of, you know, your limitations, you then pass them on to other people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then it becomes just this like soup of, of <laughs> the same, you know, and then that's mm -hmm. how things become socially acceptable. So, and then the people who actually become aware of what's going on, they are either being swallowed um, in, in the soup or they they uh, step out of it, you know. It's yeah. a, um, and 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 that's a hard way to. No, step that's out why of you're it. so interesting because you're in both well. And I've I've lived in the science world and the corporate world, and I now have just like uh, an infinite sea of really deep, wise oriented friends, and they still often don't talk. I think that's one of John's kind of and Jordan Peterson and people like them um, that they're able to kind of be in both worlds. And when they're in the like the serious business world, they don't forget their spiritual values. Yeah. And then when they're in the spiritual world, they don't forget their practical, scientific, grounded kind of values. And and getting both groups to kind of see the other side without abandoning who they are, yeah. it's so powerful. Uh, John was on an interview with Jim Rutt. I don't know if you know him. He's a really business. Yeah, yeah he's you'd like him because he's just been like billionaire business. And now he runs like a podcast that's all about like consciousness and people like John. And, and, mm -hmm. and so he's, when he speaks on the business world, it's coming from like experience, not from ideas and from fantasies and stuff. So he has really, really clear, powerful things to say there. And then when he talks to John, he goes, oh, I tried meditation. I realized I could let go of one of my thoughts. It was really weird and cool. <laughs> and so he was going, oh, I'm open to this other part of myself and it feels really good to do. Yeah. Um, and when you can get those people to kind of have a foot in both worlds, that's, that's what'll fix our world, or that's what'll at least lead to a really meaningful life. 100%. Like don't eschew the, the world we're in and don't eschew this invisible side of us that, that is, you know, so lost, uh, in, in mainstream culture. Yeah. 100%. I found that it was, it, it, it was really a tough transition for myself as well to be like, so in that world <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then and then, you know, at the same time, I've been meditating since I'm 23. So that's okay. what, that was the year that I um, that I started in consulting, just reconciling timelines. This uh -huh. is the year that I started in consulting. So in a way, I've always been on the spiritual journey as I started in consulting. Great, and yeah. Then, of course, you know, the spiritual journey kind of picks up on momentum. I didn't know I was on the spiritual journey. I just okay. meditated. Yeah, yeah. 
And then at some point it was too much. And then so I quit. And then this whole business world seemed completely bizarre to me. And I said, I don't want to have anything to do with this. <laughs> like, this is nonsense. You know, this is fucking crazy. Like, leave me alone. And, um, and I was just focusing on the spiritual side of things. And this went on for quite some time. Uh -huh. um, for about a year or so, where it's just focusing on the spiritual um, uh, aspect. And, but I, I do have this pull to be back in the business world and people relate to me from yeah, that yeah. world. Oh, it's needed. It's so like, especially and, within some people, yeah, it's so needed. Yes. Yeah. And then I'm saying, well, I mean, I, there must have been a reason why I was in that environment and why I have <laughs> also seen so many companies. I mean, as a consultant, I saw probably like 20 companies. So I have like a lot of reference point of yeah, leadership great. And, um, and, and team management and health, what is healthy, what is not healthy. I've seen mm -hmm, so many mm -hmm. different dynamics. So and then, and now with the spiritual side, then, then it kind of occurred to me, well, I'm, I'm here as a spiritual being, not to try to get out of my body, but right. to get into well, my body. Well, that's what's so interesting. Yeah, exactly. Because the idea of like, it'll happen in another world, it's almost the same trap. It's like, okay, I want to be successful in 10 years. I want to retire in 25 years. I want to be at the top in seven years. You're always sacrificing right now for this imaginary future. And yeah. the same thing with like the spiritual world. It's very easy to go like, oh, this is all false. This yeah. is all not real, but, but it has to be here. It has to be on earth. Yes. And, and that's where all of it needs to happen. It can't just happen. On the that's the side. experience that we have right. chosen, you know, you and I and everyone else. Um, we have chosen to come here at exactly this point to experience exactly that, mm -hmm. not to. And then, you know, you become aware of it. Well, I'm in, a, in this human body. I'm like, I have a purpose. I had this meaning to things, you know, might as well do something with it. But the first reaction is that's when people have the spiritual awakening. Um, so, well, first, but there's many things that can happen. I don't want to say this happens when you have a spiritual awakening. Yeah, there's many ways up the mountain. There's, yeah. there's a million different ways that can happen. In <laughs> my case, it was completely withdrawal. It was like, I don't want to have anything to do with this shit show. Um, mm -hmm. Like, leave me alone, blah, blah, blah. Somehow, um, because of, the, of who I am, that I would always be pulled there. Eventually, I understood, okay. So I, here was the business world, here was the spiritual world. I took myself out of it completely in the spiritual world. And then it's like, okay, now I'm a different person. I can go back, but in a different way. And I can really actually, you know, create some influence people in a positive way. Right. It doesn't have to be millions. I mean, maybe it is. I think I have the capability to do so. But yeah, yeah, yeah. for now, I can just impact someone else that I work with in a positive way yeah, yeah, um, yeah. and I can just you know do consulting and just bring some some of that consciousness into the business world yeah. but it took me so long to like make peace with the fact that you know I'm I have chosen to be here in this body so might as well get into the body and I think a lot of spiritual people yeah. actually get lost in that they then and this is also why spirituality has such a bad reputation because people think you just sit under the tree and meditate or, right, sit, right, right, or whatever, right. you know, you don't do anything. And there's loads of people who do that. And that's the easy way out. I think that's like in Buddhism, that's the second highest attainment is, is yes. you can get to at least personal bliss, but then the highest attainment is always bringing it back. It's like, yes. okay, there's the whole world to save Buddha. So get back on the ground and, and go help the poor or whatever you can do. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's it. That, that was a, uh, I mean, what, what that other form is is basically escapism um it is it's into... really a kind of like especially the better you get at it the more you're aware of it it becomes like a real narcissism when you're yeah. like i know i could be helpful but that makes me feel uncomfortable and i don't want to feel uncomfortable yeah 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 um, and uh it took me a long time to and i think everything is actually when i say a long time like i feel like for me everything takes a long time and actually in the grand scheme of things it happens very very quickly for me like these energetic shifts but it did take <laughs> me some time to um to understand that about myself and i think it's very it's uh, that's why it's so important to find enjoyment in the process because i did have to enjoy i had to find enjoyment also in like not earning money and like you know all of these things and like right. just being okay with not um, having much, which I think was extremely necessary for me at my personal yeah, at that yeah, point yeah. to realize hard to I do. don't, yeah. yes, I don't need a Burberry trench to feel happy about myself. Cause mind you, <laughs> yeah. my, my, my closet was full of this stuff and uh -huh. it is still from like previous times, but now it's <laughs> like, I look at the Burberry trench, for example, and I wear it because I think it's a nice trench, but not because I need it. So right. yeah. I had to go through this phase of, 
I want to be completely outside of this world. I want to have nothing to do with it. Like, leave me alone. Um, and then, then there came the realization of, okay, I, I have done the work. I'm doing the work. I'm going to go back into it, um, but in a very different way. And that's when I mm -hmm. started um, my businesses. And now the more I get ready for the next stage, the more resources I get from the universe as well. It's like, okay, you know, make it happen. Like, just earlier today, I'm, uh, I got like somebody like gifting me something for my business. I got two interns out of nowhere yeah, from yeah. universities, like put at my company that I don't even have to pay for this kind of stuff. Like the universe is really being like, okay, she's doing the work. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. she's going back. Like, let's give her some support, you know? Yeah. And you don't know is what you're putting out. Like there's a, a, a Taoist, um, quote I read one time and it's like, we all have two selves. We have the selves that we see. And then we have mm -hmm. the self the world sees. And so you don't know, you know, you put in all this work. So the private world is just seeing a whole different person that you don't even realize they're seeing. And you're attracting these things that the world is seeing. And you, yeah. you, you don't even realize, oh, I wish I had this. Then all of a sudden it shows up. But yeah, the, 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 the power of just having faith that these kind of very effortful, very uncomfortable um, very lonely or isolated things you're rejecting your old personality you're rejecting your old values but then like when you do that it's it's 180 degrees in a different direction and, yeah. and you have this new power and and like you said I think it's really wise what you said um that it's not the owning of the clothes that's the evil it's just that you were craving them and that they yeah. were like all of you and things like that and I can relate to that a lot as well and you go oh I I had this image, I wanted to be like a professor. And now I do, I use a lot of the same knowledge and I talk to a lot of the same people, but I just don't have that, that false dream. And so yeah. just the, yeah, that's, that's excellent. The story you shared, that's very powerful. I think it's, uh, and that's also, you know, one of the things that I, I think people, um, uh, resonate with me with, or what I, actually, let me rephrase that. I think this is something that I would like to, um, bring out more as well that, like that it is actually not about being spiritual and being broke right. it's about right. it's <laughs> you know a relationship it's, it's not really it's not a, it's exactly it's your yeah. relationship it's like what's the when I look at like for example let's take the Burberry trench as an example I bought yeah, this I one it. when I this is a great example because it's one of the first things that I bought when uh -huh. I just started working and you know you don't make a lot of money but this is the thing that I invested in it was over a thousand pounds I mean that's yeah, a yeah. lot of money you know yeah, yeah. and what was the desire behind that was to um to belong to belong to a certain group to feel accepted mm -hmm. because I was in that environment you know everyone was wearing it so I wanted, yeah, I wanted yeah. to be long. that's it so now I don't I don't I know that nothing that I can by will ever give me a sense of belonging the sense of belonging is here like this is has nothing to do mm -hmm. with anything that I buy however I do enjoy good quality things and right. I do like I, I like that Burberry trench and I like wearing it it makes me feel like yeah, yeah, yeah. you know beautiful it makes me feel like it's good quality it's 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 an amazing uh, right. accessory um <laughs> but it doesn't define who I am. It did define me when I was 20. Right, right. No, it was symbolic of something much, much bigger and deeper. Yes. And now it it's doesn't not. mean that to you. And, and, and then when people, when people think of spiritual people, they think hippie. They think, okay, you wear like, I don't know, um, you know, shit clothes and stuff. And like, they look at me. I mean, no, you know, I have good quality stuff on me because right. I like it, but I, I, I sometimes you know, I wear yoga pants here, you know, it doesn't, <laughs> um, it doesn't define me. Like just what I, what I like, that's what I'm going to wear. And uh, if that's from a China shop, I have it from the China shop, you know, I don't give a shit. Right, so, right. But I think it's important that people understand that, you know, you are, can be spiritual and you can still have, um have all the other nice things you know it doesn't mean if that's what you want yeah definitely. if that's what you want if that's mm -hmm. an authentic desire that comes yeah, from yeah. you know your um your soul not from your ego that Burberry mm -hmm. trench back then was an ego thing now it's not you can have it all it, it, this is I don't want to put another restriction on myself like this is acceptable as a spiritual person and this is not all is acceptable well that's the same thinking that's the same categorical identity-based ego-based yes. thinking um, do you know Jonathan Peugeot at all? 
No, I don't. Oh, go ahead. Finish what you're saying. I'll, I'll I just want to give one example. There's yeah, one yeah. spiritual teacher that I really like, and his name is Bentinio Massaro. Um, and he smokes. Uh, he's one of the, I mean, most plugged in people that I've ever come across. Okay. And the guy smokes uh, cigars on his podcast. Okay. Um, on yeah. his uh, YouTube. And then people judge him for that, you know, yeah, like, yeah. how can you as a spiritual people like uh, smoke cigars and he always wears suits and stuff. And he'd, uh -huh. he'd respond saying something like this is, you know, he doesn't even pay attention to that. But when, he's, yeah, when, yeah. He, when he comments on it, he would say like, this is my authentic expression or something like this. You know, he just owns it. He says, I like uh, smoking cigars and I like that suit. End of story, you know, like as a spiritual person, I do not have to put all of these restrictions on me and like, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. question yourself. Why do you think that is, you know, like question your well, own. That's aspect. something that's a really skill to like not judge people just based on their outward appearance. Once you've met yeah. them and heard their reasoning or seen their friends or their life, then maybe judge. But if you're, if you're not going to, because this guy, Jonathan Bajot, he um, talks about symbolism and he made this point really clear for me. And, and it's like, OK, well, if you see uh, a woman and she's really into clothing and dress and stuff like that. Well, yeah, it could be because she's hollow inside and empty and shallow and petty. Mm -hmm. But also it could be because she's proud and she thinks she is beautiful and she wants to accentuate this part of herself that she loves. And those are the same visual things in your visual field when you're walking around. And you don't know which one it is until you interact with that person. Yeah. Because, um, and it could be the same person in different, like two years later is doing it for diff different reasons. Like you're saying, you might, yeah. someone that saw you five years ago and the coat and then sees you now with the coat, it's like, oh, she hasn't changed at all. But then they would talk to you and go like, oh my gosh, this isn't even Katrina. This is, yeah. Uh, so it really is, it's, that's why visually it's so hard to, to not judge people because you don't know if someone is carrying around a recent death or they're just the shallowest human being in the world until you really participate with them yeah. and see the world through their eyes a little bit. Um, exactly. And yeah, in the end, you know, what I really learned on this, on this spiritual journey, like all is okay. All is okay. It is sure. just important to, um, or even that, I don't even know if it's important, like universal, universally, <laughs> you know, God knows. Um, but I think it, it is helpful to have awareness and consciousness around why you do the things that you do and of course, yeah. just be aware of your own limitations and perceptions and then therefore mm -hmm. you know you don't judge people so easily um it's uh i mean I, I given where i'm where i grew up like that environment is full of judgments you know my parents my my father mm -hmm. for example full of judgments it's like oh, this person has a tattoo oh, why they're having a tattoo? Like, maybe <laughs> yeah, they just yeah, want yeah. to have a tattoo, you know? Like, stop it. Like, who are you even to say this is acceptable and not, you know? Just, well, that is part of how we got there, that 1950s mentality of like, there's yeah. a certain type of person and those are the good guys. And Elvis with his loose hips and his, you know, yeah. flamboyant lyrics, like, oh, get away from those Beatles uh, and stuff like that. Yeah, the very, and the opposite too. Like sometimes the, the poorest, most spiritual people are also judging a lot and they're yes, missing opportunities yeah. to connect too. Totally. And, and uh, just not to over like Buddhism today, but like, uh, you know, the God's light shines on everybody, right? He, he wants to shine on the worst people the most in some sense. And like, if you don't want to at least consider other people's point of view, it gets really, really dicey. And then you're cutting yourself off. That's the part of the tragedy is when I say, oh, I don't like rich people or young people or women or business people or people that aren't like me is probably like the way to yeah. boil it down the quickest. Um, then you're just missing all these opportunities to learn, to network, yeah. to be happy, because eventually you can get so narrow that no one is attractive, that no one is worth your totally. time. And yeah. then you're just practically dead. You you might yeah. as well be dead. Uh, and it, so it's, yeah, I would like to add to this that you know yeah. first of all you really yeah you're absolutely right you completely restrict yourself and cut yourself off from all the opportunities and at the same time it is also okay um to say like i don't resonate with xyz energy and i'm yeah. not going to spend time with them that's a because really good then point. i think a lot of people then think well i have to love everyone right well, no, first of all yeah point. you have it would be good to have like some basic universal love and compassion for everyone the world would be a better place but it doesn't mean that i have to spend time with everyone you know, there's, yeah, no, there's, that's, that's very, very wise that to be able to discern 
because that's maybe like the the buddhist hippie flaw is they want to try and do more than they can and then they get exhausted and they're not getting reciprocated by just giving to people that don't care or by yeah. wasting all their energy on these smaller things um so it is really important to have like the integrity and discernment to say like i just you I feel like hurt when I'm around you or I yeah, yeah those kind of things that is very you do important. you and you're perfectly <laughs> right, right, right. And, and, and okay as a being but I personally do not resonate with that energy I just had a case like this uh -huh. last week where I felt like um, their value system was just not aligned with my value system and what I think is important I'm not going to attempt to change their value system. I just let them know that that was not an interesting business deal for mm -hmm. me and send them off energetically. And that's fine, you know? And that's honest. Yeah. That's, that's a really powerful thing too, is like sometimes when you're just talking with someone and you just say, oh, I'm not comfortable going there. At least now it's out in the world. And then mm -hmm. if they still pursue that or still want to change you or, or, want to be around you at least you gave them the opportunity to be on like you were honest and a lot of people um don't do that that's 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 really important to yeah uh, to to say like oh i have a limit like that's another thing we don't do well as people right now is like just acknowledge our limits and our, our finitude and our capacity to to be around situations that are and boundaries yeah yeah, yeah exactly boundaries. It's, it's yeah exactly um And that's so important, right? When you have healthy boundaries, then you can actually do more. And, and part of, I think, my learning about like how to be better at spiritual practices was going like, okay, I need to have kind of a, a safe zone to rejuvenate in and to come back in and to relax in so that I can go out into the world and accomplish challenging things. But if I'm always yeah. just pushing, 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 changing, 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 I'm going to be weak. And if I'm always staying safe, 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 I'm also going to be kind of disappointed because I'm not living up to my potential. But when you yeah. can, when you can say, okay, well, no, I've got these boundaries. I, I, I'm not willing to do certain things and you are, that's fine. Um, yeah, that's, that's very important because it is yeah. easy to get in that trap of like, all is love, all is oh, one. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, where there's love, there's also um, hatred, you know, not right. to like talking as in not to say like this is also okay, but like just be aware <laughs> that, you know, the universe is a polarity. Um, right. If there's dark, there's white without, you know, each of them, like one couldn't exist. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you need the contrast sometimes to say, uh, you know, that's what I want and that's what I don't want. And then establish very clear boundaries around, around that. So it, it is really important that people ask themselves, like, what, what are my values? This is a very simple question, but mm -hmm. it's quite a hard one to answer. What are my, what are my values and what am I tolerating and what am I not tolerating? Mm -hmm. And then act accordingly, because every time that, you know, somebody valued, uh, um, validates your boundaries, um, they take space within you and that space cannot be filled with something else that you actually want to have in your life. It's like when you have weak boundaries, all of these oh, things. Oh, right, I see. And they, they, they fill your energetic space. And then for the things that you actually do want to have in your life, you do not have time or space yeah, because yeah, yeah. everything else is already in there. So it's really important right. to, to have that boundary topic. I was just talking about this with somebody else uh, from, from my community earlier because... Uh, we like actually these energetic boundaries would be really good to create some awareness around that and how you manage how you manage it yeah and 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 planning space or keeping space that I, when I was in graduate school um there's so many opportunities you go from like working your butt off yeah so then you get in and then everyone wants your time yeah and I remember an older student was like as busy as you get as awesome as the things are around you try to leave a little bit of space in your calendar because when something really, really awesome comes up, you want to have the space yeah. to put it in. And that's hard to do because then if you have too much space, you get bored and, and kind of all of these negative things can manifest because you're not engaged enough in the world. But the same thing, if you're over engaged, then the, the aspiration that you've really been wanting to do You have to turn it down if you don't have this. Yeah, space. you don't so, even notice it. In most right, cases, right, you don't yeah, even you notice even it. Be, be, yeah, that's a really good Because you're so too. busy with all other stuff. Uh -huh. I have to say, like, I've went from, like, being extremely busy with everything to, um, to I have my, 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 very free. I'm basically very free because yeah, yeah. I know that, um, 
Uh, and I yeah, think it's I, really and I, the envy is the wrong word, but I, I super respect how like powerful you trust your intuition. It's really, um, yeah. it's really interesting. It's really pretty cool. It's, uh, I have to constantly like keep <laughs> the connection to source, you know, to remind myself okay. it's all fine and like be uh, uh, to, uh, to meditate a lot, to keep the connection to uh -huh. my intuition and myself. Um, mm. Because otherwise I'm, be, I'm getting like, I'm getting distracted by all of the opportunities and all of the things uh -huh. um, that are going around. And I just know I need, I need space in my life for the, the things mm. that are actually meant to find me to find me. And they always do. So sometimes mm. it's a bit scary because then there is a week or so where not much is happening. And you think to yourself, should I have kept myself busy with like this <laughs> kind of this? And you know, all of these things say, they come up these thoughts. And then it's, it's then it's really important to stay centered and, remember who you are and what you want and what you don't yeah. want and be okay with the nothingness and then guaranteed as soon as you let go of it and really let go not like mentally i let go of it and i wait two weeks and if it's not there then then yeah, i'll go yeah, back really like, just sit in the space of the universe really, yeah yes like let go of it huh. and guaranteed it will find you the things that you actually want they will find you oh that's excellent it took me a long time i'm again like you have to go through situations where it wasn't always like that i learned my my lesson the hard way you know but always chasing the wrong things and always keeping myself busy with uh -huh. all of this nonsense yeah, to then yeah. realize when i do that there's literally no space for the things that i actually want to find me uh -huh. so so let's let's talk about your practices I, I was really interested in that as well so what do you do on like a daily or weekly basis to keep grounded in touch with the source in touch mm -hmm. with yourself like these kind of things that you're saying and doing so i have a few um well first of all meditation is the most important uh thing for me i spend about an hour and a half to two two hours or so in meditation oh wow um, what, like how one are in the morning or what kind of meditation yeah. yeah one in the morning one hour in the morning one hour in the evening usually can huh. vary a little bit um i started I learned meditation, uh, transcendental meditation. Okay. Um, that's a mantra based meditation where you literally transcend your thoughts. So you have mm -hmm. a mantra, which is personalized to you, um, that your teacher gives to you. And then you, um, you repeat that mantra in an, uh, with no effort. So you don't like think the mantra, but it kind of just plays in the background. And every time okay. the thought comes in, you remember the mantra and it kind of takes you into a different dimension, different space. Uh -huh. Um, this is very much here on on the on these chakra levels, um, okay. the crown chakra and the um, third eye level, which I've only come to understand later on. But it, it's really about the transcendence of self and the delusion of all those ideas and thoughts and uh -huh. really dissolving. When you say self, yeah. you mean ego, more or less. Ego, yes, yeah. Okay, gotcha. And um, I right now I don't do I don't do this too much anymore because I realized, speaking of the grounding, that. For me, it's very easy to access those dimensions and to okay, right. yeah, you must go that. into those John. spaces. Uh -huh. Yeah, um, but it's more important. It's more difficult for me to actually stay in my body and wanting to be here and like mm. wanting to engage in the world in the way that right. I do, um, or making that more easy. So I have now practices that get me more into my body. So, for example, qigong. Um, yeah, John yeah. talks about this as well, like the yeah, I started um, the him. movement. Yeah. And uh, just getting into the body, really important. Feel mm. yourself. Qigong, I uh, started doing some yoga. Um, yoga is not 100% my thing, but it helps to like get into the body. But the most important thing that I do right now is the grounding meditation, which is yeah. um, where I focus just on the lower center of my, um, of my belly. So the uh -huh. belly center here, yeah, where yeah. all the, um, the root chakra, the sacral chakra, all of the lower chakras uh -huh. are which are the life force the life force is in our uh, yeah, yeah. in our in our belly and yeah, yeah. basically our consciousness is like a tree and it's rooted in those mm. lower chakras so the more oh, the 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 bigger and the more firm your roots are the easier it is to you know literally be here and like mm -hmm. be oh, grounded wow. and do work um, that can benefit people and of course yourself um, and not go huh. off in these spaces here where you go into different dimension you don't see the purpose of being on earth anymore <laughs> so you know that's, that's the that's why i'm like i kind of transitioned my um, meditation from like i reconnect on this level and then i literally bring it down all my chakras and i focus okay. on my lower um lower belly center and this huh. is the meditation also that i do teach when i walk in that capacity okay 
And what is helpful then with some people is to do the inquiry, to inquire into your emotions. So instead of just transcending your thoughts and your emotions that you feel, what is a lot of meditation practice about the transcendence, is to mm. actually feel them, to have those conversations, to yeah, have yeah, the inquiry. Yeah. Oh, to be like, oh, fuck, now I have all of this anxiety coming up. Like, let's inquire into it. And let's, let's dissolve it. Because it's like when you don't put attention to it, when you push it away and be like, I don't want this uncomfortable, I don't want to feel it. Right. Um, it what you don't own owns you. Right. Dissociation is like a good short-term yes. strategy and it works. The military teaches it a lot, like ignore the pain, da, da, da. But then it was real. Your body it is real, evolved yeah. to notice these things. And if you just compartmentalize them forever, like you said, they'll own you. And then it's yeah. much worse than, than directly... Yeah. engaging with these things yeah so i That's really excellent. look at these things um either through self-inquiry sometimes if i don't have a partner to do this with i do self-inquiry with myself you yeah just, you talk, either i talk to myself oh, like set cool. a timer for 15 minutes or i take out a journal after meditation and i just write down what comes and if there's a feeling of yeah unease or even happiness it'd be like you know it can be something positive as well like, <laughs> oh super happy like where does it come from and you inquire into the happiness what is it that brought you this level of happiness and then you know that's then what I want to fill my day with more huh. so I have a lot of basically just getting into my body like really sitting with what is and accepting it for what it is and oh, then excellent. Uh, the yeah the acceptance is really important because then it can it doesn't own you anymore like you accept that it is there and then so the emotion is almost like okay i have no grip about this person anymore because it just acknowledged my existence you know right no no what you're saying is so brilliant because because the meditation and the moving practices really kind of like wake up the mind wake up the nervous system but then these other practices that you're talking about right now really get in touch like we hijack our heart has nerves our vagus mm -hmm. nerve, like all of these, our gut, there's also, there's way too many nerves in our gut for it just to be food processing. Like there's no yeah. way it's just helping balance bacteria and stuff like that. So you're, you're really like engaging all the systems all of it. and yeah. then they're, they're available for you like the rest of the day. Um, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so excellent. First of all, I feel like way more just like okay i know i know what's going on and then you know you when you, with an awareness of where you are at you can structure your day in a different way you can oh yeah because you know? you're even willing to listen really intently yeah. to that and say oh i got to get rid of this stuff this i need yeah. more space today or i need I, I i'll ruin relationships if i'm talking to people all day and yeah like exactly because oh, you know where excellent. you're coming from you know yeah, you, yeah. you understand yourself and you acknowledge that and i always say it's like it's decoding yourself when I, that's kind of my yeah, this is like a one of the language. frameworks that I have. It's like yeah. decoding yourself, understand what's going on, then accept yourself, and then create your reality from there. Like yeah, because your ego it. will push back, so you have to accept it and integrate it. Yeah. And, oh wow. And yeah, that's that's one of the main practices that I do. And then there's many different things like um, I do breath work as well. Like when I feel like it's needed, you know, usually that would tell me after mm -hmm. like a meditation um i do lots of journaling i it's like the meditation is the constant that's always in my life every single uh -huh. day no matter what yeah, and yeah. then from there i'll be i will know what else i need like do i need a journaling session do i need a hypnosis do i need whatever well, yeah yeah i've been know? learning that recently of like okay it's not just have like the godzilla list of mega practices and just do them mindlessly no. you need to also be mindfully like what do I need? What, what have I been doing too much? What yeah. have I been not doing in a while? And, and it's, there's a dance within the dance even. Totally. Um, For example, today it told me when I woke up after meditation, it, it really felt like my body needs a rest. And it asked me literally yeah. to, to do a day of fasting. So my mind goes, Oh, cool. But I want to eat. I want to eat. I have planned all of it. You know, I love to eat. Um, but uh -huh. it said that no, don't eat today just drink water and coffee that's fine uh -huh. um, but don't eat and now it's been almost 20 hours or so I haven't eaten I'm a little uh -huh. bit hungry but I felt like this is exactly what my body now needs and this is what it said to me this morning in the meditation so I'm just yeah, gonna yeah. go with that now yeah a lot of really great thinkers talk about the body and it's not really talked about as a source of information or wisdom or knowledge yeah. in like normal culture but but yeah, when you listen to that, like even just like 
oh, I need to cry right now. I remember a friend got like really, really hurt and he like needed to lay down. And he's like, oh, I want to cry. I don't want to cry. I'm like, just cry. And like I touched just him do it. and he yeah. just did. And immediately like he relaxed. You could see his whole body relax. Yeah. And, and just, it all changed. So like his body, your body knows so much. Your body knows. And we're, we're, our mind is so powerful that it can repress the whole thing. Yes. Uh. I had a moment like this yesterday. <laughs> it was Sunday, actually. I went to a spinning, um, a spinning class like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, fast yeah, yeah. Bi bi bicycling, riding. Anyway, right. I was it's in spinning like class. Spinning, yeah. Yeah, I felt like really good about myself. Suddenly, I feel like the sadness coming up. It's a dark room. I think to myself, I want to cry. I don't know exactly why. My mind goes, don't cry. You're in the spinning. It's like super high, high. <laughs> you know, it's like, don't cry. Um, and then I thought to myself, this is so bullshit. Like, I want to cry. So I'm going to yeah. fucking cry now. You know, this is the time to cry. Uh, so and I afterwards, how did it feel? Like, just to oh, so good. Yeah, so that's release. the thing is when you actually like do these things and then <sighs> compare before and after almost always the after is like better. And even that's so a new good. skill I've been, I've been testing as it, because it is kind of a wild west of, of learning these things, but just going, okay, before I did this practice and after, how did I feel? Yeah. And you're like, oh, it was good. Um, it's fucking so, amazing, you know? Yeah, and you yeah. think to yourself, how come I'm restricting myself in that way? So it's, it's really about like, as I'm learning this more, it's like, be present, notice what comes up, allow it the room and whichever is the most comfortable for you you know most people wouldn't probably not feel comfortable run, um, crying in a spinning yeah. class I do because I don't care anymore and also it was dark so I was like okay whatever but um, like find the find the space to be present with what is and then deal with it uh -huh. don't try and you're not going there to cry it's different if someone is no. like signing up to spin classes to then just start sobbing every time yeah. but it but just you happened and yeah, and you can you can find other outlets to also show these emotions. Went to an ecstatic dance the other day, you know. Oh, that's awesome! I've been exploring that's, dance. Dance it's so awesome. good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I that's what funny... the, we lost, right? Like the the kind of colonial um, yeah. view that just dominated the whole world for the last two hundred fifty years. Like I read this book on dance, and all they did when they were kind of going to these Native American cultures, these new cultures that like they they didn't even know these continents existed. When they were coming over here they're like "Ooh, that's weird get it out of here Ooh, that's yeah. too get it out of here and we're all living in the shadow of that and we don't know crying is okay and dancing is okay and hugging like no one hugs anymore yeah it's so weird Especially after covid oh i'm sure yeah covid just is a whole separate like yeah uh, meeting crisis of, of <laughs> everyone's I, like i think when you and john talked about it like people just had to sit alone with themselves yeah for the first time in their lives and it, like most people can't do it. I was so happy. I'm like, oh, this is awesome. More time yeah, for me. me. But yeah, but most people are just going crazy and getting weird habits and spraying yeah. boxes with cleaners and stuff, um, getting more neurotic. Uh, and and yeah, no, this is this is excellent. So, so just to kind of not lose too much of my focus, um, do you have mm -hmm. any other practices that you do or any other things that balance mm -hmm. some of those things out or especially social practices that you try to do or? Uh, I know John had kind of said contemplation uh, or yeah. reading practices. Yeah, I think I, um, I, well, I contemplate every single second, you know, like there's always something coming into my awareness that I contemplate and it can be as random as there's a rice sack in China that just uh, uh, fell and like what effect could that possibly have on the world? Like my mind goes crazy uh -huh. places. So what I try to do, um, but that's just me, what I try to do um, when I finish like all of my practices and some of the, I, the contemplation just happens automatically. I read a lot, well, not these days so much, but I sometimes read quite a lot, but it's to really, uh, this is, but it's my personal challenge is to um, be in my body. So I, then I try to like supplement it with like, I go running, I be active. I meet friends and just do something and actually not talk so much about consciousness and spirituality and stuff because that's what I contemplate oh, about smart. all the oh, freaking good. time wow. you know the conversation that we are having now I can ha I have this conversation with like all of my friends are aware to the level that I can have these kind of conversations yeah. with they're always insightful and always amazing um, but then sometimes I feel like I have to get out of that and really just get into like something stupid, you know? Yeah, no, like, no, that's that's so clever. Yeah, and I, a really lot of stupid. amazing artists and and performers have a like a, a thing that they do less, way less, but that is so unrelated. Yeah, that also channels their expertise and their cognitive faculties and their personality yeah. and stuff. But it, it's kind of 
separate it, it, that it doesn't have to feed back into like the no. your main set of values and your main kind of movement in your life yeah i tell um, you the most contrasting thing um that yeah. i do to get me uh kind of to get my mind switched off which when people hear this about me they will probably think like what the hell um, <laughs> but my, my mind is so active and like always going these places that sometimes it can feel exhausting to me you know and i now oh, already yeah. meditate I can relate so much to that, yeah so, but even then, like, it's like, as soon as I get out of med meditation, it starts again. So I know, yeah. Sometimes it's like, it become it's evening and I'm thinking to myself, it, it just doesn't stop. You know, I cannot stop. So what I do mm -hmm. is I watch something so dumb on Netflix, you know, yeah, yeah. It's so unbelievably dumb, but it really helps me. And one of the things that I, um, that I've come to really enjoy is watching uh, keeping up with the Kardashians. <laughs> no, no, that's so like when, powerful. When people yeah. hear this, they'd be like, "You, know, this is the biggest trash TV, you know? And I think to myself, yeah, it is. But it really also helps me to, like, then I'm thinking, wow, this is what life can also be like. Look what problems people have, you know? Like, and I'm thinking the collective consciousness and where the world is going to go. Yeah, and these yeah, people, yeah. They just think like, oh, I want to buy like a pink Ferrari or so. And I think to myself, <laughs> <laughs> that's <Yeah>. amazing. <laughs> so that really, that's a contrast. That's a really sharp contrast. Yeah, no, if, if you're really into like, like facts and knowledge and doing and, or, or like the heart and the soul and being and becoming and transformation, there is that kind of mundane world that it's good to be a part of and like you said yeah. i think like like jogging or swimming or just like i love going to saunas and just the heat oh yeah and, me too and really yeah. mindfully going like okay i am the heat instead of having a bunch of really relaxed yeah. thoughts just really be like oh, what's the wood over there what's it feel like to be the wood and just yeah. really being in the space um and and even like i i love watching just good fiction that's from like the 1800s like uh, uh mm. going like oh they're just marking a path about the map in russia and it's some really simple movie uh, yeah. or or like a youtube channel about like oh japanese history and it's like so weird and loud and yellow and purple yeah. and and you go oh cool that's so different than what my mind has been doing what i've been paying attention to and and if you look at like the big picture of, of my life like that's so weird that he does that but it's such a balance and it's such like we need all the parts of ourselves um even the surprising parts even the the reality of the kardashians yeah but not as like a dogma but as like a you know a, a just to get access to that stuff too yeah totally yeah i mean <laughs> when you you ask about run yeah practices that i have and i have to say like this kind of stuff you know, this has become part of my practice not always but sometimes when it when i really do this work um it, like when i have to hold that space for like many people or just being very um involved in in it yeah. and i'm like and then my mind just doesn't stop it's just actually i don't think it's my mind it's my spirit like it's i get because i can i can oh, yeah. tell the difference when my mind is trying to digest things versus when i just receive a lot of information that's also so insightful for me at times you know when uh -huh. i when these wisdom bombs drop on me and i don't I, they're, they're not coming from me they're just coming through me yeah, and yeah. you know it's always like wow that was very deep you know and then you contemplate them and like all of a sudden this like three hours into your <laughs> nothing and i'll be like no no i just need to it just needs to stop like the kardashians well please. right and too much insight john talks about this too is like he he's used this phrase insight porn because mm -hmm. people will come to these retreats or do these practices and they actually are like start to crave insights it's another kind of like bad craving and i think you can only integrate so much at a time anyways you actually yeah. usually don't need more information and more insights you do need insights but like if you're always sitting to have your mind blown and then always doing a practice just to get all this extra higher consciousness and stuff, it can be really empowering to go, oh, I was so creative. I just had this idea that's so new or I had this insight into my relationships or whatever, but that can become maladaptive too. And you it, like finding the balance between being a pure intellectual, being purely insightful, being a doer, yeah. being open, like are, are we're so complicated that you need to to have so many different things and even these really it's, again it's it's not just what you're doing but it's how you're doing it which gets lost like john i, I don't know if you saw a series on like the stoics and the cynics mm -hmm. and i said you, you watch like three months of his stuff to get 
Yeah, I, I, I did. I, it rings a bell, but I can't, cannot remember. Um, so the cool point that is that now. the cynics kind of get the psychology right and that they're like, oh, yeah. so many people are wasting their lives chasing goods and power um, and, and whatever else. But the Stoics um, can get the inner power of judging things correctly. So instead of just rejecting uh, yeah. all yes. shopping is bad. Yeah. It's, it's how we're doing it. It's not yeah. just what, but it's what and how. So again, back to like the first, very powerful. The, yeah, the, the Burberry thing. It's like, yeah. if, if, if I'm, um, I have a very similar story. I bought, I, I was tutoring as a job I, I love doing and eventually I had enough money doing it that I could buy these Oakley sunglasses. Mm -hmm. And I remember like, finally, I've like worked so hard that I can actually afford something more than the minimum and get something I want. Yeah. And, you know, on the surface, like, oh, that's so stupid. Why are you spending money on sunglasses when you can buy like a $60 pair that's just as good? But like symbolically, it was such a big deal. So it's not even just ever the what, it's the what and the like the why, how. Um, yeah. And it's so easy to lose track of that stuff. It's so, because you might just need the Kardashians or you might need to mindlessly go on YouTube for four hours yeah. and watch cat videos. And yeah. then you come out the other side and you're like, oh, Finally, my, my, my creative mind slowed down enough that I'm back in my body. Yeah, um, totally. It's that contrast that uh, we talked about, like the, um, the mm -hmm. black and the white, you know, it's right. the same with the work that we do. It like it cannot um, one cannot be without the other. That's why there's a shadow and there's a highest frequency. You know, you cannot uh -huh. reach the highest frequency if you don't embrace your shadow, if you don't look at it, if you, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. So like everything, the universe is polarity and so everything is okay it is just yeah how you do it are you aware of what you're doing and how it shapes you and then you can choose freely right but be if you are well then you're, you're conscious not, then you're then you're like connected because otherwise yeah. if you're just over identified as, especially if you're just unconscious i think that's a good assumption that everyone is yeah. starting from kind of childish unconsciousness um but then you go you don't want to go to the top and yeah. just go okay i can see everything from here yeah because that's a selfish too. Like there's selfishness in, and even in that stuff. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's very, very, it's so complicated. It's so funny that you're like, oh, I've simplified my life and it gets twice as complicated sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> well, I don't want to use up any more of your time. And this has just been a great conversation. Um, Absolutely. But maybe sometime we could talk again. And, and definitely, like I mentioned last time we were talking, um, I have friends that are in kind of like the business and spirituality world that are, are yeah. trying to form stuff. So I'd definitely like to reach out to you about that as well. Yeah, I would future. love to on, on oh, both. Yeah, I'm happy okay, to fantastic. have a conversation with you anytime. And also um, Good. On also whatever else you think um, could be interesting. So I think it was a really nice connection. And thank you for reaching out. And yeah, yeah. 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 And, and maybe some of the group practices will I'll reach out if I'm doing some of those sometimes, too. Yeah, for sure. I would love to participate awesome. in those. Awesome. Thanks, well, Robert, for your time. Yeah, it was thank really you nice so much. Nice to speak but, to you. <laughs> exactly. You too. Bye bye. bye.